Agora eu vou sair um pouco de, de, das perguntas que estavam mais ou menos estabelecidas. O que é que o levou, que, o que o levou a... It's a new question. Yeah. Out of the plan, yeah. uh, O que que o levou, o que é que o interessou na proposta de trabalho no deserto do Catar? About between uh, 2009 and 11, um, I was working on a piece in Qatar. Miss Van der Rohe, uh, not Miss Van der Rohe, I am Pei, um, asked Sheikha Mayasa, who was the daughter of the mayor of Qatar, if I would build a piece for the extension of his museum. And um, Qatar is a little bit like the Cote d'Azur, uh, not quite, but it. Uh, <laughs> Hold, hold on, hold, wait, wait, wait. In that, it's this half moon bay shape in terms of its siding, and the city then lines the corniche. So, and, and then they built all these terrible, superficial, ugly buildings to line the corniche, which are like postmodernist nightmare. In fact, that they've taken Arabian kind of um, facades and attacked them against um, glass buildings. Um, but anyway, uh, I.M. Pei built one of the best buildings he's ever built there, if not the best building he's ever built. What he did is he went out into the water and he um, dug up all the debris. And at the end of an interior corniche, which he made in the water, so you have the museum here in the water, and then he made his own interior corniche, reflecting the bigger corniche uh, that goes to all the hotels. And he had dumped all this dirt there for about a half a mile. And then he invited me to say, here, Richard, what do you want to do with this? And uh, I went there and looked at this 30-foot high pile of rocks that went on forever. And I looked at his museum. And I was with a young architect named Hiroshi Okamoto. And I said, uh, why don't I just get rid of all this stuff? Why don't we just push these rocks away and build a pier 175 feet maybe 75 feet wide, right out into the water, curve it around, and make it confront the uh, museum, and then try to link the two together with something or other that I'll figure out later on. And he was all for it, and then I had to convince Sheikha Mayasa to do it. And uh, we'll get to what you're going to do. <laughs> and while um, that was going on, and I was building models in my studio, and went back to see the site again. Sheikha Mayasa said to me, would you like to build a piece in the landscape? And I looked around and I said, what landscape? <laughs> and she said, the desert. And I said, I, I don't know, I'm not particularly interested in building a piece in the desert. And I said, Bob Smithson was a good friend of mine. I went out there and helped him stake out the spiral jetty. And after he died, I built a piece for me, Amarillo Ramp. And um, I, I'm not actually sure I want to go play in that backyard. I, She said, look, we have a man named Faisal who's the head of our archaeological team, and he's a Bedouin, and he knows every foot of every desert. Why don't you go with him? Just take a look. So John and Clara and I got in Faisal's car, and we started driving to various deserts. And then we went up near Bahrain, and there was an archaeological site with marvelous petroglyphs. Nobody even knows where they come from, and they're like pictures of boats and little dots making houses and whatever, and we were completely blown away. And we thought, yeah, but this isn't a place for us. It's nice, but, you know, I'm not an archaeologist. And then they took us to a place called Brook, and it's a nature reserve. And it's in the western part of Qatar. And it's a very strange place in that it has a form in it called a barga. And a barga is a curvilinear uh, concavity with a plateau. So these are gypsum kind of high... 50-foot plateaus that are scattered all throughout this desert. Now, it's not like um, when you go to Monument Valley where you have these enormous, it's like if Monument Valley shrunk to 50-foot high gypsum plateaus. And it's not a very beautiful desert. In fact, it's hard and nasty and there's shells underfoot and it's hot. But it has a certain kind of uh, harshness. And 
I didn't know what to do there. I thought, Jesus place goes on forever, and it's probably about, I don't know, 20 miles long, and at some places six miles wide, at some places maybe more. And it, it's kind of, if Qatar is shaped like a big thumb, the, the country, this is like a little peninsula sticking off where the Arabian Sea comes on one side and the other. So Clara and I and John would go out there, and we would come in through this little, not maybe three or four houses in this little town with a few camels walking around. And we would drive out along this long plain, and we would see these, these bargas. And, and then, then we actually started walking around and looking at the bargas and climbing up on one and climbing off. And then we drove back, and we found another. And the very first one we found, actually, Clara pointed to it. We were driving in the car, and, and it only looked like from about f four or five miles away that the elevation only went up a couple of meters, maybe three, four meters. And there was a barga like this, and that kind of a curve of shape like this and like that. And that sh topologically, that shape that goes both this way and this way is called a saddle. And we walked up to this saddle, and we looked over and uh, between these two bargas, and there was the sea on the other side. So there was the sea on this side, and the sea behind us where we had just been driving up from. And we thought, oh, this is like a natural pass between both sides of this peninsula. We didn't think too much about it. And Clara was very keen on it. And John and I, you know, we climbing around, we could care less. And then we, we went further out into the desert, and we found a form of a barga that was almost like an amphitheater. And I thought, wow, this is really something. And it was like a, a horseshoe, and it was 50 feet high. And you went inside, and it was silent. And we, I thought, well, gee, I could do a piece here, and easy. And then I thought, this is too much of a setup. I mean, you're building something almost like in a room in the desert. And, but I wasn't sure. So I had um, plans made of both sites, one and two. And I looked at them for a while, I didn't know what to do. And I, I, we came back and we put up seven in the middle of the water and seven got completed and we still kept going back out of the desert. And then I had a model made, I decided on, on the first site, the one with the two bargas. And we had a model made, in fact we had two models made. I had one in the studio in New York, one in the studio in Long Island. And I, I kept making linear forms and round forms, and they all looked hopelessly uh, naive and had nothing to do with the desert, nothing to do with the place, and I, I just couldn't figure it out. And then one day I thought, oh, the bargas. Have to deal with the bargas. Now all the bargas are level to each other, and they're all 50 feet high. And these two up across from each other are 50 feet high. So then I started in this, on the model I made this they had this beautiful topographical model made, so it's made with every level, like you could see every foot that it fell in both directions. So I thought, if I start setting up some plates, and I don't want to use, lay some formula from mathematics on this site, let's let the land decide where I'm going to put these pieces. So if I want to make these pieces that I'm going to set up as high as the bargas and level to the bargas, and I want to deal with the incline of the plane, how far do we have to go down the hill on one side and down the hill on the other to set up two plates that are leveled with the bargas. Because I wanted the plates to be leveled to each other and leveled to the bargas. So I wanted to deal with the incline that levels them and the bargas that level them. On the, on the bargas that run, if you're running, walking toward the east, is that right? Yes. Um, we found that you didn't have to go too far to go up 54 feet high. Maybe. Uh, eighth, uh, less, sixteenth of a mile. And so we thought, oh, that's interesting on the plan. Then if you come up closer to those two bargas, the first two were close. But the next one, to make the next one level with the second one, we had to go a great distance. And then to make the fourth one level with the first one, between the first one and the fourth one is almost a kilometer. So now we have four plates in the desert on center with each other, spanning over a kilometer, and the landscape itself is deciding their placement. And I thought, this could possibly work. But you know, there, there aren't any assurances, because you're out in the middle of nowhere, and there's no directionality. There's nothing to, nowhere to locate yourself. There's no demarcation. And why would anybody go out in the middle of the desert and stick steel plates in the ground anyway? And uh, what are the local people going to think of that? And so you have to like, just go on faith that you think you know what you're doing. 